Rick Sanchez is an excellent grandfather. Yeah, I said it. Now if you just stick with me, Morty, we're gonna be- HOLY CRAP MORTY run! If you've watched Rick and Morty, then you're probably familiar with the often turbulent relationship between Rick Sanchez and his grandson Morty Smith. The pair are always going on adventures together, but Rick is usually like the worst person ever. Ugh, you're growing up fast, Morty. You're growing into a real big thorn straight up into my ass. I guess that comes with the territory of being the most intelligent person in the universe. While it may sound cool, it's quite a heavy burden for one person to shoulder. As a result, Rick tends to overindulge and acts a little recklessly from time to time. <laughs> These babies just saved this lame-ass party! Bubble up a dub dub! But he's an amazing grandparent nonetheless. Okay, I didn't say that he's the best, but he's pretty good, and a lot better than we give him credit for. Man, that guy is the red grin grumble to pretending he knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you agree, huh? You like that red grin grumble reference? Yeah. Well, guess what? I made him up. You really are your father's children. Think for yourselves. Don't be sheep. What constitutes a good grandparent, you know? Onion rings. Oh, hot, but that's good. To some, it's buying nice things. To others, it's spending quality time. You certainly have to factor in how much they care for one another and how much value they bring to each other's lives. In fairness, only Rick could define what being a good grandfather means to him, and only Morty could attest if this were true or not. Knowing Rick's egotistical way of being, it's safe to assume that he sees himself as a pretty awesome grandfather. He tends to think highly of himself in pretty much every regard, so why would this be any different? From Morty's perspective, he too probably thinks highly of his grandpapa. He definitely respects his intelligence, but as they say, actions speak louder than words, and I think the truest sign of Morty's love for Rick is the fact that he keeps joining him on all of these adventures. Morty keeps partaking, so that would mean that he's into it, and is getting some sort of value out of all of this quality time with this miserable old man. Sure, he does a lot of horrible stuff to Morty, y y you're a monster! but ultimately he cares about him. Rick is just a... he's a unique guy. You'd be weird too if you were the smartest person in existence and wholeheartedly believed that nothing mattered. Rick is a nihilist through and through, but the one and only thing that he legitimately cares about is Morty. They butt heads from time to time, but that's just because Rick can't understand Morty. He doesn't know what it's like to have emotions and motivations and those types of things, because he's seen it all before. He's done everything and he knows it all, so he's numb to life at this point. Yeah, that's the three lines of math that separates my life as a man from my life as an unfeeling ghost. It's why he's so reckless and careless on their adventures, and it's why he, you know, tends to have a few too many drinks from time to time if time to time meant always. He doesn't know what it's like to be a regular person with normal thoughts, so they're bound to clash on occasion. However, he spends so much time with Morty, clearly taking a massive interest in him, just in his own awful and sometimes detrimental kind of way. I'd even venture to assume that he'd have given up a long time ago if he didn't have a reason to keep testing out new technologies and to keep going on these adventures. Wait for the ramp, Morty! The only reason Rick keeps it up is as a way of teaching his grandson. That's right, these adventures through space and time are meant to be teaching moments. A lot of the time, Rick is testing his grandson. Think about it. Every failure that Morty has, Rick usually leads him right there yet he always ends up safe in the end. That's because these are meant to be teaching moments. Horrible, painful, miserable lessons, but lessons nonetheless. Rick is essentially parenting in his own unique way. While his tactics may be questionable, his intentions are surprisingly noble and kind. He may not show it well, but the whole series is about Rick caring for Morty. For a perfect example, look no further than the very first episode. In the pilot, Rick manufactures something called a neutrino bomb. I had to, I had to, do, I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to make a bomb, Morty. Which is meant to wipe out all of humanity on Earth. His game plan, which comes after a few too many bevies, is to get Morty and then go get his crush Jessica and make sure that the two of them are safe and then wipe out the rest of the planet. I'm gonna make it like a new Adam and Eve, and you're gonna be Adam, <gasps> and Jessica's gonna be Eve. Sure, it's a bit excessive and. Maybe buying some flowers is a better way to start, 
but it's the thought that counts. Rick was willing to eliminate absolutely everyone and everything in our known existence just so that his grandson would get some guaranteed action with the girl that he likes. If that's not love, then I don't know what is. As is typical with these two, it leads to Morty adamantly disagreeing with the plans and ends with them getting into a scuffle. Morty's definitely more of the sensible one of the two, which may even be a result of their relationship. Perhaps Rick is more of a lead by example, you know, here's what not to do kind of guy. I mean, you're young, you've got your whole life ahead of you, and your anal cavity is still taut yet malleable. For more proof of Rick's undying dedication to his grandson, let's look at one of the most uncomfortable scenes in the show's history. In season one's Me Seeks and Destroy episode, Morty gets harassed in a bathroom stall by Mr. Jellybean. He holds his own and fights off the assailant, but it clearly leaves him rattled and traumatized from the experience. Rick quickly puts two and two together and realizes what happened, and as the pair flee the scene, Rick makes sure to give Mr. Jellybean his just desserts, no pun intended. You know, because he's a candy and candy is dessert. Okay, I totally intended for that pun and I'm sorry I lied to you. While heartwarming isn't exactly the first word that comes to mind when talking about a character's life ending, it's certainly a scene that displays Rick's protective instincts. In the episode Close Encounters of the Rick Kind, Evil Rick kidnaps the real Rick and Morty to steal Rick's knowledge and to add Morty to his enormous Morty torturing shield. The real Rick, or Rick C-137, breaks down in tears at the sight of his young grandson strapped to the wall with fear in his eyes. Evil Rick taunts him for showing emotion, which is the perfect catalyst to motivate Rick C-137 to save the day. All it took was a bit of mockery, oh, and his, you know, his grandson's life in danger. Another prime example of their bond is in the season 2 episode Get Schwifty. Morty's had enough of Rick's antics, so he ditches him. He steals the portal gun and ends up on Bird Person's home planet. Bird Person tells Morty the things that Rick could never bring himself to say and explains why bailing on his grandfather while trying to write a planet-saving song wasn't that chill of him. In bird culture, this is considered a dick move. The high point comes when Bird Person gestures at a wall of framed photos, the last of which is a picture of a strapping young Rick Sanchez holding an infant Morty. Rick cares so much about Morty that he's actually willing to sacrifice himself. In the final episode of season two, Rick realizes that his actions have been hurting the family, especially making them live on Dwarf Terrace 9, so he turns himself in to the authorities. The Smiths are allowed to go back to the newly alienized Earth and resume their lives as normal as possible. Rick is locked in a maximum security holding facility in an interdimensional prison, where he's considered a war criminal. The whole thing is shockingly heartbreaking. But it really goes to show a lot of character growth from old Rick Sanchez. He would have never turned himself in to give his family a better life in season one. At this stage in his life, and with his family's well-being at stake, he's willing to be strapped to a panel for the rest of eternity. And it isn't even the first time that he throws himself in harm's way for his family's sake. In the episode A Rickle in Time, Rick drives through the garage floor to give his sole working time stabilizing collar to Morty. As a result, Morty will live, and Rick will continue to fall endlessly through the cold, dark vacuum of space. It's the ultimate sacrifice. I'm okay with this. Be good, Morty. Be better than me. That is, until he realizes how to fix the other collar a mere couple seconds later, and restores order completely. Still, in the moment, he was willing to sacrifice everything, including himself, so that Morty could live. Not only is Rick an awesome grandparent, but he's the freaking awesomest grandparent on the planet when compared to the rest of the Smith family. Beth, Jerry, and Summer are all terrible to Morty. Not only are they rude and mean, they're just straight up neglectful. Do you ever get scared Grandpa Rick might make me his new sidekick? If it wasn't for Rick, then Morty would be a complete afterthought in the Smith household. Rick is actually the only one doing the majority of raising Morty. Sure, he has parents, but they're so obsessed with themselves and their own issues that they barely even pay attention to their offspring. Luckily for Morty, Rick is there. Otherwise, who knows how messed up Morty could become. So Rick takes an interest in Morty, he teaches him valuable life lessons, he puts him ahead of everything else, and he's his closest companion. Tell me again how that's a terrible grandparent? What do you think? 
Is Rick as bad as they make him out to be? Or is there some underlying love there that he's just embarrassed to admit but definitely has? After all, emotions and logic tend to act like two magnets constantly distancing from one another. And the smartest man in the universe probably doesn't want people knowing that he has an emotional side to him as well, because that goes against all the logic that he stands for. Let us know how you feel about the relationship between Rick and Morty in the comments section down below. And before you go, make sure to smash that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant to stay up to date on all of our latest releases. Until next time, bye!